Совета министров СССР. An official announcement from the Council of Ministers. There has been an accident at the Chernobyl atomic power station. One of the atomic reactors was damaged. The consequences of the accident are being taken care of. Help is being given to the victims of the accident. A government commission has been set up. At the time, uh, Belarus was really struggling. It still is. I think most people had either uh, denial, possibly, of what it meant or, or the impact, and that was just a survival technique, really. I mean, they, they couldn't think about it all the time. It was so devastating. And others had the Chernobyl syndrome, which meant everything that ailed them, they attributed that to Chernobyl, everything. And so it was kind of either complete denial or just every second of every day was related to Chernobyl. And so when we started to reach out to those communities and the families and children there, you found that uh, uh, they were convinced that just about everything was contaminated. And certainly in some cases it was. The groundwater had been contaminated. You couldn't go out and, and grow food as you might normally do. Stores were empty. And that's what I remember especially, is that people were desperate to get anything at all. When we realized what happened, uh, we decided to just survive. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we tried not to pick uh, up mushrooms and berries. So we tried not to stay under the sun. I can say that I remember that pretty well because I was uh, like 15 years old only, but that was scary because you see we got a lot of news from each other, but we still didn't have any government response uh, on this accident. People left their countries, even country. People left their homes, definitely. And the most scariest thing was that we didn't have any information. In the former Soviet Union, there were areas of greatest need. And without question, Chernobyl was number one. And so our church, the United Methodist Church, was asked to reach out to help different places in the former Soviet Union. We sent over clothing and, and things of that nature on the front end. And then we wanted to be involved with the families and the children. And that's what led to uh, Children of Chernobyl. So Children of Chernobyl was an effort to say, okay, how can we help these kids in a contaminated region? Certainly you have to take them out of the contaminated region to build up their immune systems. And so that was the, the bottom line. If you could bring them to America, and in this case to Alabama, and they could stay for a month or six weeks, uh, it definitely improved their immune system. And uh, the kids didn't speak English. So then we had a team of translators that came over and they were amazing. I met Patrick Friday, who was actually the organizer of the Children of Chernobyl. I don't remember, probably it was like 1992 or 1993. My mom introduced him to me and I got a suggestion from Patrick Friday to move to Alabama with a group of kids as my mom's helper as an interpreter. We, with Patrick, we visited each family with, them, with him. We started with the coordinator uh, of the district sm uh, small st uh, city, uh, Druzhny, and the coordinator was uh, among the families of, or from the families who came from uh, Chernobyl zone. To tell the truth, kids were absolutely different. Some of them came from towns. It's not like cities, but small towns. Some of them were from the villages, and actually when we visited their places, their homes, we saw the poorest conditions uh, where these children lived. 
They had all these health-related issues. They needed dental work, and they had thyroid cancer, or, or we need to check for that, things of that nature. So we worked a lot in partnership with Children's Hospital and other medical facilities across the northern part of the state. So the first question we actually asked ourselves was, if it is not so cruel to take these kids to America to show them this life, to feed them with their good products, and then to take them back. In general, that was a bit cruel. But in details, we were also happy that these kids saw another life. So we hope that probably their generation could change something in our country too. I remember being in the airport in uh, Minsk, the capital of Belarus, and all those families were there. And I was telling them about what was going to happen. And they were reluctant, and yet for them, this was their chance. Think about your own kids. Would you be willing to send your children, let's say they're seven or eight years old, to a foreign country to people you don't know? And so that was the look on their face, that concern, that, that fear. And yet, in the middle of it was this, this is their one, their, their one opportunity to get out of this country, to get out of the dead zone, and for their lives to improve. And so the parents were happy as well. It was a somberness and a, and a happiness together. I first heard about Children of Chernobyl through our church. I think my first real um, experience with it was a year or two before we had Ivan come stay with us. Um, some other families in our church hosted. Being a teacher, being somebody who loves kids, I thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, they're really helping the helpless. They're helping the kids of this disaster. I emailed Patrick and I said, okay, when you start taking host family applications, I, I want to get in here. There was a little hesitation because at that time, my husband and I didn't have any kids. And after lots of conversations with Patrick, um, they did decide that we could be a host family. We all met at a church. Um, they brought all the children to a church and the host families met them there. It was early morning. <laughs> So there was a, uh, a, a couple, and I really don't know how to talk with them, how to explain them something, or yeah. She, she was li like my second mom, so yeah. It was really cool that they uh, became a member of their family. That time, yeah, it's like mm, five minutes, and that's it, yeah. <laughs> and all of us have been praying for this. Each one of you I see today, I know you've been bringing this together uh, in your families and talking about it and letting your children know. Uh, I think that uh, the families, American families, uh, had prepared very uh, well for the trip. Uh, for the, uh, well, uh, they welcomed kids very well. Uh, Belarusian kids didn't know any, the majority of them didn't know any English words. I taught them some English words uh, uh, some names of fruit and meals just for them that of course McDonald's was the first and the, the most <laughs> interesting uh, cafe or just a restaurant for them. And so the kids we would once they got to Alabama uh, we would try to set up a phone call if we could and I remember one child said to his mom and, and the translation came through I live like a king and he said that because the house had more than one room, and he'd grown up in one room. Another family came to me and said, we've got a concern. Our child must really be sick because uh, she's eating all the fruit. And we put it out on the table and all the fruit is gone. And so I went back to her, uh, you know, separately just to see how she was doing. I said, how do you like the fruit? She said, oh, it's, it's wonderful. She said, I only have an orange once a year if I'm lucky for my birthday. And here in America, I can have an orange every day. We did things like going to the zoo and going to the Space and Rocket Center, shooting a rocket that didn't shoot, but he and my husband built a rocket and went out to a ball field and tried to shoot that off. But looking through the telescope at the stars at night, things like that, just trying to make his time here fun. We did play dates with some of the other families so that he 
wasn't um, just here, and but pretty much every day they had activities where we brought the kids and they all went and did things together. So it was a pretty busy schedule for the, the two and a half, three weeks he was here. I was very excited. It was really interesting for me to explore the world. Alabama, it's a very warm uh, state and that is why it was interesting for kids that uh, parents organized swimming lessons for kids and guys, especially boys, they liked uh, like when they were uh, taught to play baseball. It was rather difficult for me to explain what is going on there, on the, but nevertheless they enjoy this. I still think that there are now children's minutes in each church when all the kids, they just come in front of the church seat and the preacher uh, told them some stories, some Bible stories. The kids were exposed to a family setting where prayer and engagement with God, your, your faith journey, was uh, a daily thing. And so what we saw was the kids going back to Belarus, and I remember being there in Belarus, and one of the kids was telling his story, and he said, well, Mom, I learned to do this, and he grabbed, he said, everybody grab a hand, he said, and he started praying, and he said, I learned to pray in America. So when the departure time came, uh, obviously, people just couldn't leave the child at the bus. They needed to go with us to wherever else we were going. So it was kind of like a caravan. We just didn't want to let go. And ultimately, putting the kids on the plane, uh, there wasn't a dry eye. Everybody was crying. <clears throat> I, I'm still touched by that. They showed their parents, their friends, that life is different. The world is the same everywhere. It's just your attitude to it. This is very important for these young children to understand that they have abilities to change their lives better, to make it better. Each child could be in America only once. That is why I think it's very important that we could bring uh, many different kids. And that prog program was suc successful. See that it was beginning of my of of my today's life. It was not just it was not just a three week project. It was not just a little vacation for a kid that that wanted to come and experience something new. It was a new family. It was um, crossing those borders and and really making a relationship and seeing how other people live and how um, different cultures. Um, can all come together and uh, I don't know, I mean, it was life-changing for us. I mean, it was an impossible situation to get the kids here, to get their visas, to get the plane tickets, to raise the money, it, just all the practical things. It was just a miracle. Every time the kids came and they came, uh, we had four or five groups that came over the years, 250 kids uh, and staying with families all over the state. So I just look back on it and just thank God for uh, the fact that we could reach out to so many families and children and then continue that journey with them uh, to the present day. During all my trips to America, I guess I was crying all the time. I mean, these trips showed us that we are humans. We are persons, we are people with hearts, first of all. People everywhere, common people everywhere, they, are, they have the same needs. They help, could help each other in different situations. And I think that it helps our Belarusian people not only to get the help, but to give the help to people who really need it.